All right, we'll say good morning. Let us begin. We'll begin by thanking our sponsors, our Talmud Torah sponsors, for the month of Cheshvan, to thank you all in Sarah Kalman for dedicating all the Shurman Drashos this month. Our Dafyomi sponsors, as a Zechosifar Afur Shlema, for Dr. Aviva Weisbar, Buchama Aviva Bas Shena Chana, as well as for. Sorry. As well as for Rachel Yehudis Bas Tova Gittel. We. Uh, Good. We hope that these special women have a refuah together with Kol Chol Yisrael. Now, both with that, let us begin. Make sure I didn't... Okay, good. So, we'll say a lot to do today. Merit Hashem starting a new park today as well. Really incredible sugi. So, we'll say we left off. We left off. Today's daf is Sadiq 95. A lot to do. We left off on Sadiq Dalit Amad Bey's 94B. And Mikomakam Kashya. So, we'll say, remember again, we left off with the Machlokas... Rav and Shmuel, with the case in the mission of Bayez Shenifrat Mishdei Ruchos, of a home that's preached on two different sides. So we kind of apologize. We left off a little bit in the middle of the conversation yesterday. So the Gemara says, Miko Makam Kashya. Nevertheless, we are left with a question. What is the question? So the Gemara says, the question is, Lama, why does P. Tikra only work uh, from one direction and not from two directions? So says the Gemara, Kida Omri Bey Rav, Mishmei De Rav, because what's remember again, the way we explained Rav's understanding over here is that the home in question was breached on the corner. That's what it means, Mishte Ruchos. And ultimately, again, it had a sloped roof. So the breach on the corner is what makes it from two directions. And remember, we saw an interesting idea that even if you subscribe to the concept of Pitikr Yor Bisosim, that the edge of the roof could, sl- could kind of come down and form a Mechitsa that is only with a flat roof, not with a sloped roof. So this is actually quite fascinating. So to over here, the Gemara suggests that the case in question is where the wall was breached a total of four different tfachim, of four places. Now, we'll say, if you take a look, this is picture. This is picture. Sorry. So this is picture 342. So we'll say, if you look in picture 342, you'll notice over here, that according to Shmuel, what's unfolding, I will say, is the wall is breached, if you notice, in four different ways. Which I will say means that according to Shmuel, in order to seal off this breach, you would need four different P-Tikras. I will say it's, it's actually great on, on picture 342. You can see it's numbered one, two, three, and four. You would need to apply P-Tikra in four different locations. So the Gemara says, I will say, and I remember again what I was mentioning, is as follows, that... According to Shmuel, I don't know what I was mentioning, the Gemara mentioned that according to Shmuel, Halakha Lamaisa, Pitika Yord Vesosim only works if you have one full Mechitza. If you have one full Mechitza, then Halakha Lamaisa, you can go ahead and do Pitikra on the other three sides. But if you have no walls, if you have no walls at all, Shmuel holds that you cannot apply Pitikra on four sides. We'll say that's the Achsadra case, as we're going to see for a moment. So therefore, the case according to Shmuel, what does it mean that the home was breached on two sides? It means that it was breached in a corner. It was breached in a corner. So I, why can't you say Pitikra? Because Shmuel's case is the nature of the breach is that it would require, again, P. Tikra on four different parts. Again, you'll refer to picture 342. And Shmuel holds the Shitaso, the Halach Lamaisi, can't have P. Tikra on all four walls. So the Gemara says, Shmuel, Omar Karav, So Shmuel doesn't hold of Rav's interpretation. Why? Because the Mishnah doesn't make any mention of a sloped roof. But Rav, lo Omar Kishmuel, Rav doesn't hold like Shmuel, because Imkain, Habile Ach Sadra. And Rav doesn't hold like Shmuel, because according to Shmuel, then, the case, the way he's setting it up, should be a typical case of Achsadra. And again, remember, if it comes to Achsadra, what's, remember, what's our Achsadra? Achsadra is our roofed pergola. V'rav le'tamei da'amra Achsadra, mutar le'teltel b'kula. But remember, again, Rav holds that in general, an Achsadra case, you are permitted to carry under the Achsadra. Why? The itmar Achsadra babika. If you have an Achsadra in a large open area, Rav amra mutar le'teltel b'kula. Rav says you carry throughout the entire Achsadra. Shmuel says you're limited to Dalad Amos. Rav, Amram, Motel, Tal, Tal, Bekula, Amrin, and Pitek, Yerav, So you've seen this before a number of times already. So Rav said this is a fascinating case. You have, again, a roofed pergola. So Rav says you, that entire area is considered to be enclosed. Why? Pi tikra yarid vesosim. We view the edge of each side of the roof as if it extends downward. Therefore, you have four walls, totally enclosed area, and you can carry in there. Shmuel, Amram, Shmuel says... 
Eimetaltlin ba ele ba arba amos. Shmuel says you only have dalad amos. Why? Lo amrina pitik yarav says because Shmuel says we don't say pitikra. Now, boss, we've clarified that point. It's not the pshat that Shmuel doesn't hold of pitikra. Shmuel holds of pitikra. What doesn't he hold of? He doesn't hold that pitikra could be applied to four walls. In other words, you can't have if you have no walls, you can't apply pitikra on four sides. If you have one wall, you could apply pitikra on the remaining four, on the remaining three sides. Good. So the Gemara says, Be'eser kuli amalop ligi. So the Gemara now says, We'll say, if the breach in question is ten amas or less, everyone agrees. Keep ligi. So where does the machlokis come up? Be'eser me'eser, if the breach is more than ten amas. Ve'ike da'amri, others explain. Be'eser kuli amalop ligi. And I will say, ultimately, you remember, let me clarify that. If the breach is less than 10, than 10 amas, everyone agrees that, remember, let's both say, what's the status of an opening less than 10 amas? Status of opening less than 10 amas? No. Doorway. It's a Pesach. It's a Pesach. If it's a Pesach, then what? You don't even need to apply P. Tikra. Right? So remember, again, P. Tikra is what you apply to remedy a breach. But if you have less than 10 amas of opening, you don't need P. Tikra. That's called a Pesach. Where does the machlokis come up? Rabbi say the machlokis comes up in an opening of more than 10 amas. Vigadamri, others explain, no, keep ligi. I'm sorry, vigadamri, biaser kuli amalop ligi. Everyone agrees that more than 10 amas is not a machlokis. And I was supposed to say that it's not good. Keep ligi. Biaser, dam ravihud. Rabbi say, here we go. Top of tzadikhe. Kora dalid matir bechorva. Rabbi say, if you have a kora, if you have a beam that is four tzvachim wide, it allows for carrying in a ruin. Rabbi say, this is picture. 343. So if you notice over here, picture 343, what you have is, is an open ruin, right? A ruin that is totally open and breached on one side. If you have a core, if you have a beam that goes across the top of the chorva, so we'll say that beam allows for carrying. Now, where does it allow for carrying? Underneath the beam. What's the pshat, I will say, because underneath the beam, we will apply the concept of pitikra yoreid visose. Pitikra yoreid visose. Therefore, we'll say the Gemara says as follows. So, Kora Dalad Matir Bechorva. Rav Nachman Amra Baravua. Kora Dalad Matir Bemayim. So, Rav Baravua says, no, no, no. The only time that the Kora of Fort Tfachim of Width allows for you to view the area as enclosed is where? When it's over water. I both say this goes back to what we said before that in general, there are kulas when dealing with water, the allowance for drawing of water. But on dry land, that wouldn't work. So, the Gemara says, Money, so I'm sorry, uh, Amra Abu, Kora Matir Bemayim. So, money. So, I'll say, so whose opinion is reflected? Lahach Lishna da Amit Be'eser Lo Pligi, Be'eser Be'divri Hakol. So we'll say ultimately again, according to this version that said that according to the Amrit Eser Lo Pligi, Be'eser Divri Hakol, Lahach Lishna da Amit Be'eser Pligi Kirav. So, I'll say ultimately again, if you, according to this version that you hold, that in the case of 10 Tfachim or less, everyone agrees. But more than Aser, ultimately, again, there's a machlok. Because according to this approach, it would be a case of 10 Amas or less and reflective views, Rav's view. Lema Abai Rava to Rav Shmuel. Maybe Abai and Rava had the same machlok as ultimately as Rav and Shmuel. How do we align? I'll say, here we go. The Ithmar, Sichich Agabi Achsadra, Shiesh Lapitzimin. We'll see if you put schach, this is a sukkah case now. You put schach, you put schach on top of an achsadra, on top of a pergola. And I'll say, obviously, this is an unroofed pergola. So you have an unroofed pergola, you put schach on top of it. And what happens? We'll say the schach has pitsimin. Pitsimin are boards. Are boards. If you take a look, um, no, not yet. So it has pitsimin. So what's the halacha? Kshayra. Ultimately, I will say the presence of the pitsimin is going to make the sukkah kosher. What happens if it doesn't have boards? Abai Amr Kshera, Berava Amr. I will say, take a look, I'm sorry, take a look at the first Rashi and the Daf. Sheish La Pitsimin, Amudin Kevun Bemichit, so Se Pachos Migimo. So we'll say, here's what we're assuming Pitsimin means. Pitsimin means boards. And how are these boards arranged? They are arranged at less than three Tfachim from one another. So what happens if you have boards arranged less than three Tfachim from one another? Love it. And therefore, it's a full wall. So the Gemara says, if so, again, so just understand, you have your pergola, obviously without a roof. The pergola has boards, right? It has walls made of boards that are of space less than three tzvachah from each other. You put, you put schach on top of that. So as long as there are pitzimin, ultimately, again, it's kosher. If there are no pitzimin, if there are no boards, then the sukkah is not kosher, right? I should say it differently. If there are not pitzimin, Abayi says it's kosher. Rav, Rav says it's psula. What's the pshat? 
Abai Amr Kshira Amr Pitik or Yavis Ose. So we'll say, Abai says the Sukkah's kasher. Why? Because we'll say, remember again, the Achsadra obviously has boards on top of it also. So we take the, we view the edge board on each side of the Achsadra as extending downwards and closing off the Sukkah. Pitik or Yavis Ose. The Rava Amr Pesula. Rava will say that ultimately, again, the Sukkah is Pasal. Why? So the Gemara says, Lo Amr Pitik or Yavis Ose. Ultimately, again, because Rava will not, will also agree. Excuse me. Rava will say that we do not hold of Pitikra Yoreid Vesosim. So the Gemara says, Lema Abaye Kirav Virav Kishmul. So we'll say, let's say that Abaye holds like Rav, because remember again, Rav was an Abose who was willing to apply Pitikra Yoreid Vesosim on multiple sides, and Abaye holds, I'm sorry, let, I'm say, let me say that again. Say that Abaye holds like Rav. So we'll say Abaye who says that an Achsadra Sukkah, even without walls, even without boards on the sides, is still going to be kosher, because we'll say, Pitik Yor Vesosim. Let's say that Abaye holds like Rav, because Rav was also willing to go ahead and apply Pitik Yor Vesosim on four sides. And Rava, who says that the Achsadra Sukkah without Pitzim, without boards, is going to be possible, he holds like Shmuel, because we'll remember again, we saw it Shmuel, as much as Shmuel said that you could hold the Pitik Yor Vesosim, he held that what? You can't apply it to four open sides. To which the Gemara says, Ali with the Shmuel called the Amalop Ligi. We'll say, in accordance with the position of Shmuel, everyone agrees with his Shita. Keep Ligi, Ali with the Rav. So we'll say, the Machlokis is really in Shita's Rav. Abaye Kirav, so we'll say, Abaye clearly holds like Rav. And that's why Abaye will say that even an Achsadra Sukkah with no walls will still be kosher, because we'll apply Pitikir Yard Vesosim on each side. The Rava, Rava will say, Ad kan lo ka'amar Rav hasam ela dahani mechizas, ela dahani mechizas lach sadra. So we'll say, but Rav will say like this, in my case, I was able to say, Pitik yor v'sosim by achsadra, because the achsadra was made for an achsadra, and being used as an achsadra. So when the structure is being used in its normative fashion, that's when you can say, Pitik yor v'sosim on all four sides. Aval hacha, dahani mechizas lav lo sukkah avidi lo. But perhaps Rav would say that in the case of using the Achsadra for a Sukkah, we would not apply Pitik Yor on all four sides. Why? Because the Achsadra was not made to be used for a Sukkah. The Achsadra was used, made to be used for a, to, be, to be used as an Achsadra. So we'll say, so what the Gemara is introducing is something very interesting. That maybe even when Rav, that maybe even Rav who holds Pitik Yor Vizosim, and remember Rav holds the most expansive version of Pitikra Yorid Vesosim, because he holds that you could do it on all four sides. Perhaps he only applies that in a case where it's what's called normative usage. Normative usage. But if you're using a structure in its non-normative way, then you cannot utilize Pitikra on all four sides. Therefore, the usage of an Achsadra as a Sukkah, which again, at least in this case, is not the normal usage of the Achsadra, will not allow you to apply Pitikra on all four sides. Interesting. Rabbi Yossi, Omer, and Mutaras. So we'll say, remember again, back to the Mishnah now. So remember, we'll say, the, the topic in the Mishnah was as follows. The topic in the Mishnah was a Chatzar that was breached to Rosh Hasharabim, or a home that was breached, or a Mavui that had its Lehi or its Kora removed at the onset, right once Shabbos started. So remember again, Rabbi Huda said, as long as you started Shabbos Beheter, right, in a permitted state, that permitted state remains with you throughout the duration of Shabbos. Obviously, you have to fix the Chatzar, the Bayis, the Mavui in advance of next Shabbos. Rabbi Yossi came along and he said, look, if it's Mutter for this Shabbos, it's Mutter for next Shabbos. And if it's not mutter for next Shabbos, then what? Then what? It's asr for this Shabbos. So now we'll say the Gemara said, let's analyze this sheet. Rabbi Yossi, or Rabbi Yossi, I don't understand. Is Rabbi Yossi coming to asr or to be matir on this Shabbos? So we'll say, remember again, the Mishnah is dealing with cases of, of structures which were intact at the onset of Shabbos, and then something happened that they were then breached over the course of Shabbos. So it's a simple shayla. Does the original permitted status remain for the duration of Shabbos, or does it change along with the change in mitzvahs, change in reality? So is Rabbi Yossi coming to say that it's mutu or it's aser? On Rav Sheshes Lasser, Rabbi Yossi is coming to say that it is aser. The Chayin Amar Rabbi Yochanan Lasser, Tanya Amar Rabbi Yochanan Lasser, that supports this understanding. But say the Brisa spells this out a little bit more. Rabbi Yossi, Amar Rabbi Yossi, Kishem She'asur Lo Asad Lavo. 
Just like, I will say, and again, you fill in the blank, the breached chatzar, the breached home, the mavoi whose lechi or kora was removed on Shabbos is going to be asr for a future Shabbos, kach asur in the osa Shabbos, so too it is prohibited for this Shabbos as well. Itmar. So the Gemara says, Halach ek Rabbi Yossi. Talach indeed follows Rabbi Yossi. U Shmuel or Shmuel says, Halach ek Rabbi Huda. Shmuel says, no, it's not true. The Halacha follows Rabbi Huda and the Mishnah. So both say, now Machlok is in the Halacha. So you, you have, you have, you have Rav Chia Bar Yossi saying the Halacha follows Rabbi Yossi. Who right, both say, who says again, if the structure is diminished, right? The Chatzar is breached. The home was breached. The Lechir car is taken from the Mavoi. Those areas become Asr now on Shabbos. And then you have Shmuel saying, Halacha follows Rabbi Huda. That, no, once a particular area begins Shabbos in a permitted state, that permitted status remains for the duration of Shabbos, even if the area undergoes some type of change. Umiyam Shmuel, I'll say first wide line on Sabi Kemal Dalif. Did Shmuel actually say, Halacha follows Rabbi Huda? So as Rabbi Hatzana, we learned, Amar Rabbi Yehuda. So we'll see, remember again, there's going to be Rabbi Huda and Rabbi Huda over here. So Rabbi Huda said, Better Amurim, when ultimately again, when do we follow the halacha like Rabbi Huda? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me say that again. I'm Rabbi Huda, Better Amurim, when is this Sorabosai? That you need Rishus from someone in order to go ahead and make an Eruv. That's by Eruv Tchumen. Right, that's by Erev Tchumen. We, we saw this so yeah. But Erev Chetzeros, Ma'arvin Bein Ladas Bein Shaladas. Also, when it comes to Erev Chetzeros, you could go ahead and make an Erev on someone's behalf, even without their permission. Why? Lefisha Zachin Adam Shalab Bafanov Bein Chavin Shalab Bafanov. Also, remember again, we had that sugya. I can make an Erev Chetz. I can't make an Erev Tchumen on your behalf without your permission. Why? Because remember, we'll see how does Erev Tchumen work. Whatever you gain in one direction, you lose in a different direction. So if I make an Erev on your behalf, as much as I'm gaining you 2,000 Amas in the east, I'm, I'm making you lose out on any movement, mobility towards the west. I can't do that without your permission. Erev Chatseros, conversely, is an objective schos. In other words, there's no downside to Erev Chatseros. And therefore, Allah Chalamai I can make an Erev Chatseros without your permission. But I'm Rav Yehuda. Amr Shmuel, and I will say, Rav Yehuda said in the name of Shmuel, Halacha Krab Yehuda, that Halacha ultimately follows Rav Yehuda. Below old, not only that, Ella Komakom Sheshana Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda Be'erevin, Halacha Kamos. We'll say, not only that, but wherever the Halacha follows Rav Yehuda in Erevin, we always pass in like him. V'amalir of Chana Bagarata, the Rav Yehuda. Amr Shmuel, Afilu b'mavui shenito karasu al achayev. So is that true? Even in the case of Osai, of a mavui whose lechi or kora was taken, because you remember again, what does Rabbi Yehuda hold in the case of a lechi or a kora which was removed? What does he hold? That's our Mishnah. What does Rabbi Yehuda say? If your mavui started Shabbos with the lechi or kora intact, and then what happened? The lechi or the kora was moved. What's the halacha in Rabbi Yehuda? What's the halacha? You can still carry in that mavui. Do we even follow Rabbi Yehuda in that case? So I will say, the case of the, of the lechi or kora removed in the mavoi is not a case of erevin. That's a case of mechitzos. Right? So once again, going back to the beginning of the mesechta, a lechi or a kora at the entrance of the mavoi is not an erev. That's a mechitza, right? That's a wall or that's, or that's a hecker, that's a reminder of some sort. So we just said, Allah Chafaz Rabbi Yehuda, by Erevin, Lav Davka, by Mechitzis, Am Ravanan, Lididimi, Farshle, Mene, the Shmuel, Kanshin, Ifritz, Ala Karmelis, Kanshin, Ifritz, Ala Shusra, and Basar, or conversely, the other possibility is as follows. That when do we follow Rabbi Huda? We follow Rabbi Huda ultimately again if the Chatza was breached into a Karmelis. So if the Chatza was breached into a rabbinic domain, then we'll follow Rabbi Huda and we'll say, that halacha lemaisa, halacha lemaisa, we view the chater as enclosed for the duration of that Shabbos. Since it began Shabbos enclosed, we view it as remaining enclosed, but for next Shabbos, you have to go ahead and fix it. But halacha lemaisa, if the chater was breached into a Rosh Hashanah, into a biblical domain, then the halacha does not follow Rabbi Huda. Then ultimately, again, we view it as breached, even on the current Shabbos. We'll say, how do we paskin? So we already saw a little bit of this. In that halach, I will say two Mishnahis ago. Remember again, we saw that when you have two chatzeros and a wall in between them, and they both made their respective eras, uh, eruvin, if the wall comes down on Shabbos, I will say, what's the halacha? What's the halacha? We view the wall as up for the remainder of Shabbos. That was the machlokis, Rav and Shmuel. We saw that halacha yesterday. Right? Then halach, I say, even if the wall comes down on Erev Shabbos, for, for, for the two chatzeros, ultimately again, we view that wall as still intact. 
their respected Erevin are still intact as well. But that's because, remember again, we saw the Mishnah Bura, the Mishnah Bura says that's because you're dealing with Chatseros, you're dealing with like domains. But the Shulchan Aruch already told us, but if the Chatser breaches into a Karmelis, or breaches into a Rishisrabim under those circumstances, we view the breach now even on that present Shabbos, and we don't say that since the Chatser began Shabbos in a state of being enclosed, that it remains enclosed. But we'll say, what about the case of a Mavui whose Korah or Lechi was taken? Because this is a very important case as well. So we started Shabbos, we'll say, it's going back to the beginning of Masechta. We started Shabbos, I put a Lechi or a Korah, right? A vertical beam or a horizontal beam at the entrance of the Mavui. That permits carrying in the Mavui. But we'll say, just to be clear, even if you have a Shitov, right? Even if you have a Shitov Muvaos, you still need a lechi or a kora at the entrance of the mavoi to allow for carrying in the mavoi. So I, Erev er Shabbos, I put it there. Over the course of Shabbos, something happens to it. It's taken away. What's the status of the mavoi? So we we'll say the Shulach Paskins and Simen Shin Samechei Sev Zayin. Mavoi shinit lu karosa olechai b'Shabbos. If you have a mavoi and the lechi or kora was taken away, afapi shehotu lamikza Shabbos, aser misham ve'elech. We'll say even though again, the Lechi or Korah were there at the onset of Shabbos. Ultimately, again, once it's taken away, Halacha Lameisa, again, the Mavoi becomes Aser. And I will say, ultimately, again, the Velo Amrinan Khan, Shabbos Hol Vahutra Hutra. So I'll say, we don't go ahead and say over here by Shabbos Hol Vahutra. Since it started Shabbos in a state of permission, it ends Shabbos. Or you could close out the rest of that Shabbos in a state of permission as well. And he refers us back again to what we saw in Simon Shin Samech. Sif Beis, which again, we don't have to get into right now. So what says Halacha Lamaisa, it appears that indeed the Halacha follows Rabbi Yossi in all three cases. Namely, if you have a Chatzar, well, two cases for now, well, three. Chatzar that is breached into a Karmelis, Chatzar that's breached into a Rishas Harabim, or a Mavoy whose Lechir or Koro was taken away. In all three of these cases, these domains become Asr on that Shabbos. The only case so far where we're going to say Hoel Vohutra Hutra, that if you began Shabbos in a permitted state, that permitted state remains is where? Which case? Which case? The two chatseros with a, with a wall who both made their respective Erevin. The wall falls down on Shabbos. We view them still as separate and distinct chatseros for the duration of that particular Shabbos. Beautiful. Says the Mishnah. Habona aliyah agabe shnei batin. Well, so this is an interesting case. You have two homes. And imagine for a moment you go ahead and... You go ahead and... You build an aliyah, you build an upper story on top of those homes, right? On top of those homes. So, we'll say, so just imagine, two homes across from each other, you build an upper story on top of those homes. So we'll say, this is still going with the P-Ticker Yard Vesosim case. Right? So we'll say, ultimately, again, this is still the situation where, remember, now you have an area underneath the upper story, underneath the aliyah, in between the two homes. So we'll say, or, or we we'll you have a bridge. And there's an area underneath the bridge. So what's the halacha? Rabbi Huda holds that you're allowed to carry underneath the aliyah and you're allowed to carry underneath the bridge. But I'll say, what's the logic? The logic is pitikir yor v'sosim. We view the edges of the aliyah as extending downwards, the edges of the bridge as extending downwards, and therefore they enclose the area underneath. The chachamim osrim. The chachamim ultimately say that it is aser. Chum say that it's aser. Va'old on Rabbi Yehuda, ma'arv in the mavai mafulash. So Rabbi Yehuda also says that you can make an eruv for a mavoi that is open on both sides. On both sides. So the Gemara Sabah so saying Rabbi Yehuda's logic is, Rashi points out, that all Rabbi Yehuda really inc- requires in order to enclose an area is two mechitzas. Two mechitzas is enough to create an enclosure. However, Chum say no, that's not an enclosure, right? You need at least mavoi closed on all three sides. And then a lechi or a kora on the fourth side. Amar Rabba, Rabba says, Lo teim, ahayin u tam drabihudim yishum de kasavar beiz mechitas da raisa. Both say, now let's go back for just a second. Why, according to Rabba, why is it that Rabbi Huda allows for carrying underneath the aliyah or carrying underneath the bridge? So we'll say, you might think it's because Rabbi Huda only requires two mechitas. That's not the reason. Elav yishum de kasavar pitiker yard v'sosim. It's because Rabbi Huda says that the, uh, underneath the aliyah or underneath the bridge, you could apply the concept of pitika yor v'sosim. You view the sides of the aliyah or the sides of the bridge as extending downwards and ultimately going ahead and enclosing the entire area. 
Um, yes, Sir Alkin, I'm Rabbi Huda. Mishyesh no shnei batim, mishnei tidir shirabim. So I've seen this case many, many times. If you have two homes across the Rosh Hashanah from each other. So imagine you have a busy street, you have a Rosh Hashanah and you have two homes on either side of the street. So what's that? Huh? So I'll say ultimately again, Rabbi Huda says you can make a lechi or a kora on either side, and that allows you to carry across. This is incredible. Carry across the Rosh Hashanah from one home to the other. So the Gemara will say. So interestingly enough, what do you see from that case? I will say, why does Rabbi Huda allow that? Because obviously Rabbi Huda is saying is two mechitzos are enough to create an enclosure. That your house on one side, your house on the other side gives you two mechitzos. The presence of the lachi or then gives you something additional. And you clearly see Rabbi Huda holds that two mechitzos are enough. To which the Gemara says, To which the Gemara says, you're right. From that case you could see that Rabbi Huda holds that two mechitzos are enough. From the case of the aliyah or the bridge, you would not be able to glean that idea. So, so what the Gemara is saying is like this. In Achinami, the Mishnah here is introducing to us something dramatically amazing. The sheet of Rabbi Yehuda is that indeed two mechitzas are enough to create an enclosure. In fact, Rabbi Yehuda, says, Rabbi Yehuda says that explicitly later on in the Mishnah. That's why he holds that a mavui, a mavui that is open on both sides, you could still go ahead and put a lechi or a kora and carry in that. Kasil's two mechitzas is enough. All the Gemara is saying is, you would not be able to glean that shita from the case of the bridge or the aliyah, the upper story. Why? Because in the case of the bridge or the aliyah, you have something else going on over here. What's the something else? What's the something else? Pitega yorib is so same. Am Ravashi. Masnisi na midik Ravashi says that our Mishnah also supports this idea. Midik tani va'od. Since the Mishnah uses the Lashon of va'od. Rabbi writes when it transitions from the case of Aliyah and Batim, it also says va'od. Rabbi va'od seems to indicate that it's coming ahead and going ahead and adding on something to the previous discussion. Am Rav Yehuda. So va'od am Rav Yehuda. Mavoi ma'arvin be'mavai ha'mafulash v'chachamim osrim. Rav Yehuda holds that halacha l'maisa. You can make an eruv. In an open mavoy, a mavoy that's open on both sides, and the chum say it's aser. I amit bishlama hasam mishum de kasavar pitigir of isosim. Hainu diktani vaod el i amit mishum de kasavar shte mechitos daraisa my vaod. So both say if you understand that the gemara is coming to introduce a new discussion, that's why it brings in vaod. See, they both say there's two. But if you're saying it's the same conversation, then why do you need the vaod? In other words, say, or in other words, stated to go back and analyze the mishnah. Rabbi Huda is stating two different shitas over here. In the case of the bridge and the case of the aliyah, he holds that you can go ahead and carry underneath the bridge, underneath the aliyah. Why? According to Rabbi Huda, why? Pitikra yoreid v'sosin. We view the edge of the aliyah, edge of the bridge, as extending downwards. Nothing to do with two mechitzas, to do with pitikra. Then va'ol, then by the way, the Gemara says, or the, the Mishnah says, there's another conversation. What's the other conversation? That you could even carry in an open mavoi. Why? Because Rabbi Huda holds that two mechitzas ultimately again are enough. So two different ideas being espoused by Rabbi Huda and the Mishnah. Pitik yod v'sosim. And ultimately again, two mechitzas are enough. So we we'll say, obviously, again, halacha l'maysa. So we know we paskin like the chachamim. Certainly again in the case of, certainly in the case of the mavoi mefulash. That I will say we hold that again, two mechitzas are not enough the araisa, and therefore in the case of a mavoi mafulash, ultimately again it would be considered to be like an open area. Now I will say in general, the discussion regarding the discussion regarding pitikiyot v'sosim is an incredible discussion. We're gonna still we're gonna still see some of it to come. We'll see the halacha lamaisa, but I will say at least what you begin to see the, the yisodistic ideas to take with you about pitikiyot v'sosim. I'm sorry, the yisodistic ideas to take with you regarding pitikiyot v'sosim. Ultimately, again, are that halach, it is a halacha la Moshe Sinai. It appears that everyone subscribes to it. It is just a machlokis about the application. So, for example, we've seen Rav holds you could apply P ticker Yerav Yisosim on four walls, which is an incredible chiddush. That's the case of the roofed pergola. You could apply it on all four walls. Shmuel says, no, maximum how many walls? According to Shmuel, three. Maximum three. You need to have one actual wall. What we've also seen is that halacha lemaisa, pitikir of say might not apply to every structure. So, for example, we saw it apply to a pergola, but it might not apply to a sukkah. We also saw that the nature of the roof could also impact the application of pitikir of For example, we saw this idea, at least according to Rav, that a sloped roof 
you cannot go ahead and apply P. Tigger. It only works with a flat roof. So just keep all of these things in mind. We will do a halach alamaisa piece on P. Tigger or Vesosim before the end of the Masechta. Hadjun halach, kal So we'll say mazel tov. We now enter the last parak of Meseches Erevin. Pretty incredible. Says the Mishnah. Hamotzi tefillin. We'll say listen to the Zatra Hasei Nike. Shabbos. Shabbos, you find a pair of tefillin on the, on the ground. So I'll say, how do you go? And I'll say, we're talking about a case over here where, so the question is, I'm, I'm either outside of the tchum, we'll see, or again, really, I, I, we're, what we're bringing up over here is an issue of carrying. There's no permissible way for me to carry these tefillin. So I'm OT tefillin. If I find tefillin, so what do I do? Machnis and zug zug. So I'll say, the way you go ahead and bring them into, the, into your home or into the city is you go ahead and you put them on. You wear them in one pair at, well, you wear them in. Zug, zug, rashes, echab rosh, echab bezra, vahinu zug, kederach shaloshan, bechol, bechol. So, so, so what you go ahead and you do, you, you bring them in, we wear, you wear them in. This is the idea. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna clarify this case more, so I don't wanna get too into it now. You find tefillin, you need to go and transport them to a place of safety, you put them on, and you wear them in. So the Gemara says, Rabbi Omer, Rabbi Gamliel Omer, Shnaim, Shnaim. So Gimar, Rabbi Gamliel says you can wear actually up to two pairs of tefillin at a time. Again, we'll define exactly what this means. So the Gemara says, So we'll say ultimately, again, when is this said? Biyashanos. We'll say now, literally, it means old tefillin. Ava bichadoshos pater. But Allah Chalamai say, if it's new tefillin, you can't go ahead and move them. Now, what's the pshat over? This is really quite fascinating. Look at Rashi B'yishanos. Shenikra kesha asay kimin shakai. Devadai tefillin. Now, listen to this. Apparently, in the times of the Gemara, they used to make, they, they had, not, they had kamios. Kamios are amulets. There used to be some amulets which were made that looked like tefillin. So, as Yabu say, there is no heter to go ahead and move tefillin to move amulets on Shabbos, if there's no ear or anything else. You are sure allowed to move tefillin, as we'll discuss. So I will say, see, interest, how do you know what's an amulet, what's tefillin, if they look the same? So the one distinction was that amulets by the Shal Rosh and by the Shal Yad didn't have the specialized knots. So I will say, let's say you come across a pair of what looks like tefillin, but let's say where the knots were, it's untied. So I will say, you could tell if there was a knot. How can you tell if there was a knot? Because we'll say after enough time of the ratsua being tied, not even after so long, the leather bends. So if you look at the straps and you see, oh, this was once knotted, then you know that those are tefillin, and that's where there's a heter to go ahead and wear it in. But if we're looking at the straps, the straps look new in that they were never formed into a knot, that's a good indication that it's an amulet, that's a kamiya, and for that you just leave it there. You have no right to go in and transport it on Shabbos. That's what it means. Shonas. But ultimately, again, where the strap itself was not manipulated anyway, so therefore it was never put into the form of a knot, you can't move that on Shabbos, and you just leave it alone. So we'll say, what happens in the following case? Let's say you found many pairs of tefillin tied together, or many pairs of tefillin piled together. So I'll say, what do you do in that case? Machshich alehen umevien. So I'll say, ultimately, again, in that case, stay with the tefillin until nighttime, and then you'll bring them back in after nighttime. So I'll say, if you look at Rashi, Rashi is machshich alehen, that's Rashi on the daf. Ajatech shach, you're with the tefillin until it gets dark. V'yishmerim, and watch over them. V'lechishetar shach, yit leim yachadu. V'gimara parach lelayalinu zug zug. The Gemara is going to ask, I don't understand, why can't I just employ the same strategy that the Mishnah started with? If I find a lot of pairs of tefillin, I'll say, how do I transport them? How to transport them? Wear them. Just wear them one at a time. Or right, or according, or according to Rabbi Eliezer, I can remember Gamil, Susie, I can wear them two at a time and just keep going back and forth. Okay, so we'll discuss why that is. Amun Beis. Obe Sakhana. I will say, what if it's a time of Sakhana? Time of Amun Beis. Meaning, time of Sakhana, meaning that Halokha Lamaisa, I can't wait out there with the Tefillin. Whatever the Sakhana is, Rabbi say, I'm scared of, uh, I'm scared of criminals and therefore I can't just stay out here. What do I do? Mechasen Baholi Klo. I cover the Tefillin. Cover the toes so that they shouldn't be exposed, and then I, I, I go home. I go on my way. Mishimon or Mishimon says, How else can you move the tefillin? No, still the chavero, the chavero, the chavero, at shemagia, the chazrachitzon. Or both remember again, if you have a situation where carrying is prohibited, even when carrying is prohibited, for example, no eruv, you're always allowed to carry. Technically, there's no isra unless you carry dalaramas. So it comes on and Mishimon and says, I have a good etza for you. Get a bunch of your chaverim. I will say, You don't even need so many chaverim. 
which is all you need to do is hand it from one person to the other. And as long as each person carries it less than Dalaramis, you can get the tefillin back into the home. So we'll say so again. Remember, I just want to point out, you don't need an assembly line of people, right? It could be the same people. I give it to Ruvain, right? And then I, I, I walk by and Ruvain gives it to me. Then I give it to Ruvain. So you could do it with a limited number of people, each of us walking less than Dalaramis, until we get the tefillin back to habitation. So let's listen to this case. It's very interesting. Let's say a man's wife gave birth in the field. And now we have to get the baby back into the home. Back into the home. So what do you do? Same idea. You can hand the baby off person to person. Right? Everybody carrying the baby less than Dalaramis until you get the baby back into the house. Even if you employ right, 100 people in this endeavor. Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Huda says, by the way, it's not just tefillin. No sin adam chavis the chavira the chavira the chavira apilu chos le tchum. So we'll say Rabbi Huda says, let's say you you have a great bottle of wine and mamish again it's outside of the tchum, but I need it, I need it. It's, it's not a want, it's not a luxury, it's a necessity. So we'll say what can I do? Rabbi Huda says you can even get a bunch of your chavirim, everybody carrying it less than dalit amis and bring it back into the house. Apilu chos le tchum says the Gemara Amru lo lo tehalich ze yosim ragli bala. So I said no 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 one second if you're dealing with utensils outside of the Tchum Rabosai. So that's already something a little bit different. Because again, remember, and we'll discuss this in greater depth as well, a, a, a utensil is often governed by the Tchum of its owner. So whatever the owner's Tchum is, that's the Tchum of the utensil. So the fact that you can go ahead and take care of the issue of carrying does not necessarily obviate the concern regarding the Tchum. So we'll say, good. Now let's analyze Tfilin. So we'll say, so the Gemara says, Zug Echad in Tfilo. So we'll say, so remember again, we have, interestingly enough, we had a machlo, well, it seems to be a machlokis here, between the Tanakam and the Begamil. Tanakam holds that if you find Tfilin, you could wear the Tfilin in. Now we'll say, now remember, I just want to point out, we're not exactly sure, in general, one of the issues we have is what is the status of Tfilin on Shabbos? What is the status of tefillin, right? Is Shabbos a time for tefillin, not a time for tefillin? So again, we're going to discuss all of these related issues. But Lamaisi, here's what I know. I don't have an air over there, for I can't carry. So because I can't carry, I can't just pick up the tefillin and bring them in. That I know. So how do I, how do I deal with it? So Tanakam, the Chum said, Chum said, put it on. You could put on one pair at a time, wear it in. It's a malbush. It's, it's, a, it's considered like a garment. You could wear it in. Rabbi Gamil says you could wear it in two pairs at a time. Says the Gemara, Zug Echad in Tfelo. So the Tanakama says you could wear it in one pair at a time, but not anymore. Lema Tanan Stam Adolok Rabbi Meir. So I'll say, I must say that this this Stam Mishnah, right? The Tanakama this Mishnah must not be Rabbi Meir. Why not? Di Rabbi Meir, di Rabbi Meir. Haomer Lo Bish Kol Mashi Yachal Elbosh Vaoteif Kol Mashi Yachal Atov. Because what Rabbi Meir holds, and we're going to see this in just a moment, that in the case of where a fire breaks out in your home on Shabbos. Fire breaks up in a person's home on Shabbos. Rabbi Meir holds, you want to save your clothing. Rabbi Meir holds, you want to say, how can you save your clothing? Put on as much as you want. Right? Put on five suits. Put on ten coats. Put on as much as you can to get everything out that you can. So, say, Rabbi Meir is of the... So, therefore, again, our Mishnah, which only allows you to put on one pair of tefillin, obviously doesn't reflect the view of Rabbi Meir. Because according to Rabbi Meir, say, what should you be able to do? What should you be able to do? Put on as many pairs of tefillin as you want to. This not also what's the sheet of Rabbi Meir? Here we go. This not. Well, the sham motzi kol klei tashmisho, the lovish komashi yochal lil bosh, the otev komashi yochal latov. Because Rabbi Meir holds it out of the If the fire breaks out in the home, I could put on as much as I want and wear it out. So what's like according? So obviously our mission does not reflect the view of Rabbi Meir. To which the Gemara says, "He's stama." We might Rabbi Meir, he, so we'll say, by the way, how do you know that the Stam Mishnah by the fire, that allows you to wear as much clothing out as you want, how do you know that that reflects the view of Rabbi Meir? Diktani Allah, lovesh umotsi uposhet, velovesh umotsi uposhet, afilu kol hayom kulo div Rabbi Meir. So we'll say, okay, pretty explicit. Because Rabbi Meir holds, you could put on, put on as much as you want, go out, take it off, go back in, put on, Come back out, take off, keep keep going on and on. So Rabbi Meir is of the opinion that as long as you're wearing it, you can put on as much as you want in order to transport the clothing. So therefore, again, if, if Rabbi Meir was the author of our Mishnah, I would have said that what did Allah Chalamais? You could put on as many pairs of tefillin as you could fit and wear them out. Yet the Tanakama holds that you can only put on one pair of tefillin. So Amar Rava, I feel Meir. So Rava says, no, no, no. The Mishnah can affect you, Rabbi Meir. Why? 
Hasam Derech Malbu Shol Kichol Shavi Rabbanon Bahachi. So we'll say, why does Shavi Meir allow you to wear out many layers of clothing? Because we'll say, even during the week, it is common for people to layer. It's common for people to layer their clothing. So because it's common to layer, the act of putting on many garments is still considered to be a normative wearage. Is wearage a word? Probably not, right? Because it seems to be a, a, normal, a, a normal wearing of garments. That's derech malbusho. So to Rabbi Meir would hold, so to Rabbi Meir would hold, the Yomar says, ha-ha, derech malbusho kechol shavye. So we'll say, ultimately again, it, by tefillin, we'll say, also you could wear it, but you have to wear it the way you wear it, the way you wear it during the week. How do you wear your tefillin during the week? We'll say, one pair per customer. One, except we'll see when that's not true. Right? One pair per customer. So therefore, we'll say, the Mishnah could even reflect it to Rabbi Meir, because Rabbi Meir doesn't just allow you to pile on clothing. Stam. He allows you to pile on clothing because that's called derech mabusho. People often layer. So therefore, Shabbos, when Simcha, you could layer. But by tefillin, where a person only wears one pair, Rabbi, Rabbi, even Rabbi Meir would agree that when going and transporting the tefillin, you could only wear them one pair at a time. So the Gemara says, so the Gemara says, the Gemara says, the Gemara says, Hasam de Bechol, here the Gemara says explicitly, de Bechol kama de Bay Lavish, le inyanam, le inyanatsala nami shariyale. So we'll say, when it comes during the week, people often wear many layers of clothing. So too then, when going in and saving your clothing on Shabbos, you could wear many layers. Hacha de Bechol nami zug echad in, tfe lo, tfe lo, le inyanatsala nami zug echad in, tfe lo. So let's we'll say when it comes to tefillin, just like tefillin, you normal, normally only wear one pair. That, therefore, even according to Rabbi Meir, on Shabbos, you would only wear one pair. Good. I will say that closes out the sheet. So therefore, again, it's possible that the unnamed Tanakama is Rabbi Meir. And the same Rabbi Meir will allow you to go and wear multiple layers of clothing when saving it from a fire, will still only allow you to wear one pair of tefillin back and forth. Because halacha l'may say it's always governed by derech malbusho. You could own, something is only called a malbush if you wear it in the normal fashion on Shabbos. Rabbi Gamliel Omer Shnayim Shnayim. So also Rabbi Gamliel holds you can even wear two pairs of tefillin at a time on Shabbos. So my kasaver. So we'll say what what does Rabbi Gamliel hold? Here we go. We'll say this gets to the core of the issue. I kasaver Shabbos zman tefillinu. So we'll say. Now we drill down to the Yisodistic <laughs> issue. It will say, is Shabbos a time of tefillin? Or is there a mitzvah of tefillin on Shabbos? So if you hold that Shabbos, technically speaking, there is a mitzvah of tefillin on Shabbos, then what? The Gibbara says, Ika sabr Shabbos man tefillinu, zug echad in tefillin. Then it will say, should be limited to wearing one pair of tefillin, because that's the mitzvah of tefillin. The Ika sabr Shabbos laves man tefillinu. And I will say, but if you hold that halach ala there is no mitzvah of tefillin on Shabbos. And the only reason why Chazal allow you to go ahead and wear tefillin on Shabbos is because derech malbush. Look at Rashi for just a moment. Rashi says over here, Rashi, I don't know what it is, but the red light is blinking. I don't know what that means on the camera. So the Gemara says, Lav zman tefillin So Rashi says over here, V'sholi rabbanan derech malbush mishum detach shetu legabei v'lo masui so we'll say, listen to this. So the shayla is, when we allow you to wear tefillin on Shabbos, what, what's, what's the license? Is Rabbi Gamil saying that if he holds that Shabbos is zman tefillin, if you hold that mamish, that there's a mitzvah of tefillin. Now again, I'll say, if there's a mitzvah of tefillin, so why don't we wear tefillin on Shabbos? That, that we'll discuss. But if you hold that Shabbos is zman tefillin, and therefore again, you're allowed to take tefillin on Shabbos because it's a mitzvah of tefillin, then I understand you should be limited to what? One pair. Because that's the normative way that you go ahead and wear tefillin. If you hold, on the other hand, that lemay what? Shabbos is not zman tefillin hu. That, right, that there's no mitzvah of tefillin. And the only reason why on Shabbos we allow you to wear your tefillin in is because we look at your tefillin as what? As a malbush, as a garment. That's how we're looking at, look at Rashi again. La zman tefillin hu. V'shoyli rabbanan derech malbush. We look at it as a garment, and that's something you're carrying. And I will say, even though people don't normally wear tefillin, ultimately, again, you know, during, during, people don't normally wear tefillin as a malbush. But again, here we're going to allow it because we want you to save the tefillin. So the Gemara says, if that's the case, then you should be permitted to even what? Go ahead and wear more pairs of tefillin. So we'll see, you, you hear the shayla, Rabbi Gamil. If you hold that Shabbos is a zman tefillin, a mitzvah tefillin, then you should be capped at one pair because that's the mitzvah. 
if you're saying that you could wear your tefillin, right? Because you must remember again, there's an extenuating circumstance. The tefillin ultimately, again, were left outside and they're going to get ruined if you just leave them there. So if you're going to let me go ahead and wear them back in as a malbush, as a garment, then I should even be able to wear as many pairs as I could fit because that's called a malbush. That's called the garment to which the Gemara says, the olam kasavr Shabbos loves man tefillin. Or the holds that Shabbos is not the man for tefillin. Right? There is no mitzvah of tefillin on Shabbos. But when the rabbis allowed you to wear the tefillin as a malbush, as a garment, in order to save the tefillin, we'll say they only allowed you to wear the tefillin as a malbush in a way that you normally go ahead and wear the tefillin. And I will say, how do you normally wear your tefillin? So therefore, again, you can't put on multiple pairs of tefillin. To which the Gemara says, well, if that's the case, Ihachi. So we'll say, if that's the logic, the Rabbi Gamil says, there is no mitzvah of tefillin on Shabbos but will allow you to save the tefillin by wearing them as a malbush. But the way you wear it as a malbush, it has to be what? The way it's normally worn. Or the way it's normally worn. Ihachi zug echad in tefillo. Therefore, I will say, again, according to that, that you can only wear the tefillin as you normally wear them during the week. You should only be able to what? Save one pair and not two. Yet Rabbi Gamliel holds it Allah Chalamai, so you could save two pairs. So I will say, here we go. We'll see if the stop over here. But essentially, Rabbi Gamliel is going to hold it. We'll he's going to see that he holds that technically speaking, there is enough room on the body for two pairs of tefillin. Right? There's enough. So we'll, say, we'll, we'll pick up at Meretz Hashem with Shitas Rabbi Shimon tomorrow.